Welcome to uh, part three of the tutorial uh, on Vue.js with Auth0. Uh, this is on authorization, on role-based um, access control, uh, to be more precise. Uh, so besides uh, knowing who the user is in the process of uh, authentication, uh, we also allow or deny access to certain resources depending on the permissions that the user has uh, or the roles, actually the roles and permissions all together. Okay, so this is what we're going to be implementing um, in this uh, tutorial. So as usual, I'm going to be following the documentation in Auto0, which is quite comprehensive. You can find uh, the tutorial at this link uh, above. Okay, so this is a tutorial in TypeScript, but this with slight modifications, I'll make it work in JavaScript, which we started uh, previously. Right, so let's start. So first we have to create um, a permission. So we're going to be um, basically allowing access to our resource, okay, to this API external. Um, if a user has the admin role and has a certain permission in our case, so usually permissions are formatted in a, a format such as the action that you want to perform and the name of the resource, okay. Oh, resource. So the actions, the action is read um, or update or delete. Um, in our case is read because we want to read the value of this resource, okay. And our resource is just called the hello world resource. Okay, just the, some hello resource. Okay, so um, let's create this permission first in Auth0. So in order to create that permission, let's go to our API. First, let's make sure that uh, uh, enable our back is actually enabled in the settings. Uh, for this sort of uh, permissions and role scheme to be able to work. Okay, we also need to add the permissions to the access token as well. So select both of these uh, options and hit save. Next, let's go to permissions and add our permission. Okay, so this is going to be our permission that our API requires in order to give us the resource. So let's add a description read. Um, hello resource. Okay, so my permission was successfully added. Now let's link this permission to the role. So let's head over to roles um, as basically stated in the, this tutorial. So let's create a role. Let's create our admin role. Okay, hit create. And in the permissions, we can link the permission that we've previously created to this role. So we need to find our API in the dropdown and select our permission slash scope. Okay, a synonym for that. Okay, so hit add permissions. And after a refresh, we should be able to see our permission successfully linked to our role. Okay, so now that we have permission linked to the role, we can assign the role to a user. So I can assign it to my user. Find my user and hit assign. Now if I go to users and select my user, I should be able to see both the permissions, my hello, uh, read hello resource permission and my role, the admin attached to my user. Okay, so after we have that, so because in our API settings, um, we've enabled adding permissions to our token, we'll, we are going to get our permissions in our uh, token eventually in this uh, login process, but usually it's uh, helpful to add the roles as well alongside this token so that we know from the contents of the token, what are the roles and permissions, both of them. So for the roles, there's no magic switch. So there is um, 
but there's still a way to add the roles through a mechanism which is called roles and uh, actually rules, excuse me, in auth0. So rules, basically a rule is a function which is executed uh, during the authentication process, okay? So, um, and this function has access to roles and has access to the token. So what this function does is basically uh, retrieves uh, the roles and attaches those roles uh, into our access token, okay? So in this case, we have an example to attach it to the ID token and the access token. In our case, just the access token uh, would be enough. Okay, so let's head over to the rules. I've basically just copied these contents of this function from here. Head over to rules, hit create a rule. We're going to be selecting an empty rule in here. Copy and paste. I believe we can remove the ID token part. We just have an access token. Our namespace is going to be localhost 3000 and once from the previous tutorial. And basically that is it. We can hit save. And our changes are saved successfully. Okay, you can check the explanation uh, in depth in the tutorial. Um, I already have a user because I logged in into my application. So I don't need to create the user. And next is the backend part of things, basically to modify our backend in order to allow or deny access, uh, depending on the presence um, of the permissions uh, into the token. Okay, but first, uh, maybe we can take a look at the contents of our token. So in order to take a look at the token, I added this console log. Uh, at the end, basically, of the uh, created function within the auth index.js, which outputs the contents of the token, actually the promise that gets us the token. So with this line in place, um, should be able to log in. Okay, and if I view my console, basically I get my token in here. Okay, I just copy it and I can go to jwt.io, paste it in here. And um, because the content, uh, because the token is not encrypted fully, I'm able to basically check um, the payload and the header of my token just to make sure that I have the roles in here. And the permissions included, which I've defined in auth0. Okay, so um, basically I recommend you uh, read upon, you know, the structure of the token and the sort of security of the token itself, okay, because as you can see, uh, the token is not encrypted, okay, but it's still secure, okay, so I recommend that you still read upon it, okay. Basically, the contents of the token are hashed using the SHA uh, algorithm, which does not encrypt, but sort of hides the value of um, the data. Okay, so the the, the a typical user uh, that gets this data doesn't, you know, immediately have access to the data, but basically sees ob obfuscated data. Okay, but still, because it's not a um, uh, it's not encryption, okay? We can just de-obfuscate um, the data which is happening in here. And what is encrypted is just only the signature of this token. Okay, so uh, just to... Uh, I'm not going to be going fully into the details of this. I recommend that you read uh, upon this, okay? But basically... We just copied our token, which is obfuscated, not encrypted. Okay, only the signature is encrypted. So we can de-obfuscate it um, and see the contents of our token. Okay, and we see that we have the roles and permissions. 
So everything is fine. Auth0 is including all the information that we need uh, into our token. Okay, so let's proceed with the backend part. Okay, so on the backend, uh, basically there's a library which assists us in checking the permissions, which is called um, Express JWT Auth Z. So let's uh, make sure that it's installed. I do have it installed, but just in case, just to make sure. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Okay, I have it in the dependencies of my package JSON. Nice. And now let's create this sort of helper function to check the permissions on our root. Okay, so let's, um, as I recommended in here, we can create a middleware folder and put our function in the permissions file within that folder. Let's create the middleware folder, create the permissions file. Paste the contents and because we have to adapt back from TypeScript to JavaScript, let's remove these types and let's use X module exports to export this function. Okay, so this is this function is going to take a look into the permissions attribute of our token um, and check whether the scopes slash permissions are there or fail with an error. Okay, it's going to be um, clearer when we actually use this function, okay? So in order to use this function, well, in this tutorial says that we can use it directly in the JWT Auth Z library that we define in here, but uh, since we define this function, let's use the function, okay? So uh, I believe we can go into the server. So besides checking um, the signature of the token with the check JWT function, we want to do another a function which is to check the permissions. So we can pass in an array of functions actually, okay? So I'm going to get the check permissions function and the check permissions function takes in the name of the permission that we want to check, okay? So let's pass in this string. Okay, let's create a variable for it. Um, let's call it low resource permission. Okay, and let's use it in here. All right, so in order to access this resource, um, the request needs to contain the uh, read hello resource permission. Okay, so whenever the backend gets a request, it checks that the um, token in the header is signed properly and checks inside of the token, checks the uh, permissions attribute, whether it contains the uh, permission to read the hello resource, okay? So if it does contain, it returns successfully the resource, otherwise it fails uh, with an error. Okay, so that should be it in theory. Let's see if we didn't miss anything. So a couple of um, clean coding uh, patterns in here. So basically you can define in TypeScript uh, these permissions as strings in an enum, okay? and use different um, this check permissions function and the uh, different requests. Okay, I believe here the author forgot to specify the check uh, JWT, okay, for correct signature, but um, anyway. So this should be it. Okay, let's make sure that uh, we're running the server. Okay, let's start the server. Let's do the request.
okay so since we're missing the token okay we get the confirmation of an error and let's do the request now from the Vue.js app which does contain a valid uh, token I'm going to the external API and I'm going to do the call and confirm that uh, the request was uh, performed successfully okay we get the resource it's the same message that the access token was successfully validated uh, and authorized okay i can refresh the server and perform the request again so yeah it was validated and authorized now what i can do is to uh, maybe remove the permission and see uh, if i'm denied access uh, to this resource so i'm going to uh, my users and i can remove the role from this user Okay, it's removed. Now I can log out. I'll log back in. I'll get a new token. Let's see the value of the new token. Okay, so now the permissions array is empty because uh, we've removed the roles as well. So the roles are empty and the permissions are empty. So now if we try to perform the same request, uh, with a token that does not have any roles and permissions let's see what we get and as we see here we get uh, an error basically with the request status 403 uh, which indicates us that the request is not authorized okay so let's uh, check again the list of the status codes okay just to give you some context so 403 basically indicates from the server from the library that performed the check that uh, the access is forbidden to this resource due to uh, the permission missing in the token so that's it um, i hope you find this helpful and best of luck.